Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation or should I say a power equation with complex numbers. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce you to something which you can see the link for. Let's go ahead and take a look. Welcome to the official CyberMath Amazon store. So on this page, you're going to be finding some items that you can use for gifts or some items that I use for video creation. I'm going to be adding some books that I use and also books that I own and you'll get to see those as well because a lot of people are asking for what kind of resources are you using or which books would you recommend. I'm going to share those with you pretty soon. Let's go ahead and proceed with the problem. Now, we have a very interesting equation, and I call this interesting because look at this. We have z at the base, but the exponents are all different. Now, think about some integer counterpart. Like if you had z to the third plus z to the sixth equals z to the twelve, you'd probably try to factor z to the third or put everything on the same side, divide by the common factor, so on and so forth. And some of these equations are solvable, right? I mean, there are special scenarios, so on and so forth. But in this case, we have a very weird situation because the exponents are irrational. ln3, ln6, how would you handle them? Even if you took out, took out some, something like z to the power ln3, that's not really going to help you. So we have to do something outside the box. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, to be able to solve this problem, we're going to be using a very important property of logarithms and this is how it goes. Whenever you have something like a to the power log b, you can write this as b to the power log a. Now you might be wondering why, why does this property work, right? Let's go ahead and take a look. If one of these is equal to let's say x, let's say a to the power log b is equal to x and by the way I use base 10 here, but you can use pretty much any base. And whatever base you whatever base you use, use that base to log both sides. Make sense? So if x is equal to a to the power log b, then I can basically log x on both sides. That's going to give me log x equals log a to the power log b. And I can kind of bring the log b down because that's an exponent. So that's going to give me log x equals log b times log a right? And then I can just go ahead and do this. I can switch these around, do a little bit of hocus pocus, math and magic, right? Using properties of the commutativity, whatever. And then I get the following. And then here's the tricky part, because I'm trying to show that this is equal to something with base b. I can do the following. I can take this using properties of logarithms. I can throw it back here and that's going to give me log x equals log b to the power log a. And now forget the logs and you're going to get the same identity. Because x is going to equal b to the log a, which is the right hand side. Make sense? Or you can do this. Call this x, call this y. Log both sides. You're going to realize that log x is equal to log y. And then x equals y. Make sense? That's probably easier than this one. Cool. So since we know this property we can go ahead and use it for our problem because that's going to help a great deal. You'll see in a little bit. Okay, let's check it out. So we have z to the power ln3 plus z to the power ln6 equals z to the power ln12. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started. So our property works for any base. So in this case, z to the power ln3 is going to be equivalent to something that we obtain by switching these numbers around. Make sense? So in other words, z to the power ln3 is the same thing as 3 to the power ln z. Isn't that awesome? Plus, this is equivalent to 6 to the power ln z, and this is equal to 12 to the power ln z. What's the most beautiful thing about this equation is that they all have the same exponent. Make sense? So it's kind of like this, 3 to the x plus 6 to the x equals 12 to the x. And I think you know the strategy for this, don't you? We're going to divide by something to get something nicer. Hopefully that made sense. I know I uh, kind of confused myself too. So we're going to divide everything by 
12 to the power ln z because that's the largest. By the way, you don't have to do it that way, but I like it that way. I don't know. So now we get the following. Since we have the same exponent, whenever you have something like a to the x divided by b to the x, two expressions with the same exponent, you can just kind of divide the bases and use the same exponent, which is that's a common exponent. In this case, ln z is a common exponent. So we can kind of write this as 3 over 12 to the power ln z plus 6 over 12 to the power ln z. That goes 1. Isn't that awesome? Let's simplify this a little bit because it's going to simplify a great deal. This is 1 fourth and this is 1 half. Cool. Now, this is what I'm getting. If I call this, and substitution, by the way, is awesome. Substitution rocks. I'm going to call this t. And this will become t squared because 1 half squared is 1 fourth. Make sense? So we get the following. t squared plus t equals 1. So t squared plus t minus 1 equals 0. From here, t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's the root 5. And ta-da! Golden ratio again, right? the infamous golden ratio. Now, what do we do with this? Set it equal to what t was. t is 1 half to the power ln z. Let's do it. 1 half to the power ln z is equal to t. And there are two t values. One of them is negative 1 minus root 5 over 2, which is the opposite of golden ratio, right? And the other t value, if you can, you can call them t1, t2. And this is going to give me negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. Awesome, but not so awesome. Look at the first equation. The solutions are not real. Well, wait a minute. Isn't this channel all about complex numbers? Yes, it is. So don't worry. We're going to take a look at it. Well, let's start with the real one, shall we? So for this one, you can basically just log both sides or ln both sides and kind of bring down the ln z and kind of solve it, right? So it's going to be like this. ln z times ln 1 half equals ln root 5 minus 1 over 2. And then ln z from here is just going to be ln root 5 minus 1 over 2 divided by ln 1 half, right? And then from here, you can basically write ln z as e to the power ln z, which is z, by the way. And from here, z is going to become e to the power ln root 5 minus 1 over 2 divided by ln 1 half. So that's going to be one of the real Z values. Let's go ahead and take a look at the complex scenarios, how we can handle it, and now we're going to finish up with that. Hopefully this made sense. Let's go ahead and check this one out. Because why do we get complex solutions? Because one half to the power of something cannot be negative, right? In the real world. So we have to go to the complex world. Let's go. Now, I need to do something because this stuff is negative. I kind of need to think about it ln, right? How do you ln a complex number? Well, this is a negative number. When you ln a negative number, you're going to get a complex number. So let's go ahead and write this in polar form, right? It's a negative number, so we can basically find its modulus by absolute valuing it, and then multiply it by negative 1 in the complex world, which is e to the power i pi. Obviously, you can add multiples of 2 pi to it, but I'm going to leave that to you and go with the principal value. So this is one half of ln z, and now what we're going to do is ln both sides. And if you remember, the ln of a complex number is the ln of its absolute value plus i times the argument. Let me, do you want me to write it down? So ln of r e to the i theta is ln r plus i theta. That's what I'm talking about. So when you ln this, you're going to get the ln of 1 half of ln z, I mean 1 half to the power ln z. And on the right hand side, you're going to get the ln of a complex number, which is ln 1 plus root 5 over 2. By the way, this is a real valued result, plus i pi. And again, instead of pi, you can always write pi plus 2 pi n, which is going to give you all the values, right? Because you're, you'll be adding multiples of 2 pi. Again, I'm going to leave that part up to you and continue with the solution. Put the ln z in the front. You're going to get ln z times ln 1 half equals this guy over here, ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus i pi. As you can see, this is a complex number in standard form. And now we're going to divide both sides by ln 1 half 
but this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to have an imaginary part as well so it's going to look like this plus i times pi over ln one half and then finally you're going to do e to the power both sides which is going to be pretty interesting by the way so z is going to be e to the power this stuff can i just bring it over i don't want to write that again because that's just gigantic so let me just be lazy and put this over here so that we can get the answer pretty quickly right okay here we go so that will be the value of z and what can i do with this whenever you have something like z equals e to the power a plus bi you can kind of write it as a plus bi is an important name right e to the i times e to the bi and then e to the a is the modulus and inside you're going to have cosine b plus i sine b of course a and b have to be real and they are actually real right and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time in another video until then be safe take care and bye bye